Why is it that so many creative small business owners seem to have trouble accepting proper compensation for their work that we do? We're diving into that today here on Bite Size Business, along with why you need to stop regarding profit as an ugly four-letter word. This is Bite Size Business, where we're helping entrepreneurs become the heroes of their own creative small businesses. I'm your host, Abby Grace, an international photographer who also loves educating for creative entrepreneurs. Let's talk about the thing that so many artists want to pretend doesn't matter. Profit. Why is it that word makes some of us want to run and hide, plug our ears, and play with Crayolas until someone changes the subject? Because deep down, a lot of us believe that we're not worth it. There's this pervasive myth about the proverbial starving artist, that there's something innately cheap or inexpensive about art or creative work. Unless, of course, you're one of the greats, and then, and only then, are you allowed to start charging appropriately for your craft. This is a myth! But you know what's crazy? It's a myth that we the creatives are most often guilty of perpetuating. So I ran a poll in one of our Facebook workshop groups to get at the underlying reasons behind what I've dubbed charge guilt, or those icky feelings when you try to tell someone what your services cost. And you know what the predominant answer was? I worry that the product isn't actually worth the price I set, or I'm afraid of what people will say when I ask to be compensated for my work. That means our charge guilt is often emanating from our own self-doubt and insecurities about what our work is worth. That self-doubt and insecurity, that's an us problem with we the creatives, not a them problem with the clients who buy from us. We need to get our heads on straight about how profit relates to healthy small business ownership. So let's get into it. We're diving into the three lies that creative small business owners tell themselves surrounding profit. Lie number one. My creative talents are a gift, therefore I don't have a right to profit from them. If you're hoping to make a living off of your craft, you have to banish this lie right away because profit is an essential ingredient in small business ownership. No profit? That makes it a hobby. Don't just take my word for it though, that's the IRS's policy. In order to claim business loss or expenses on your taxes, you must show that your business was profitable in at least three of the last five years. And you can't do that if you're not charging an acceptable amount for your work. There's a link in the show notes below to explain a little bit more between hobby versus business. But how do you know if you're turning a profit? Fortunately, there's a super simple formula that you can follow. Profit equals revenue minus expenses. Revenue is what you charge your clients and expenses are the costs associated with creating and selling a product. Profit is what enables you to stay in business. It's what pays your income, which pays your mortgage, which also puts food on your table. It's what pays your overhead expenses, what helps you maintain the equipment you need in order to do the job that people have hired you for. In short, profit is what enables you to continue doing what you love without having to declare bankruptcy. I declare bankruptcy! Profit is not greedy. It's an essential part of small business ownership. And remember, business without profit, it's just a hobby. So if the lie we tell ourselves is that my creative talents are a gift, I don't have the right to profit off of them, then the truth we'll replace that with is, in order to stay in business using my creative gifts, it's my responsibility to turn a profit. Lie number two, people think creative products are an unnecessary luxury, therefore no one will pay what they're actually worth. Can we talk about how bonkers that one is? And yet that was a lie that I believed for so long. I thought that because I wasn't literally out there saving lives or contributing to the well-being of people's bodies that somehow what I did was less worthy of monetary compensation. Just because what you do isn't a need for basic human survival, that doesn't mean it's not worth paying for. If a client wants or needs your services, it's because they believe you will bring value to them in some way, shape, or form. Maybe your work allows them to not have to do the work themselves, like when you hire someone to come and clean your home. Part of what you're paying for is the convenience of not having to do it yourself. Maybe your skills free up a client's time so that they can pursue other money-making ventures themselves, like how we hire a photo editor so I can spend more time on product launches. The money we spend on our editor literally gives gives me time back to focus on making more revenue and more income to support our family. Wouldn't you agree that's a pretty valuable service? And because what we do is non-essential for basic human survival, it means that the folks who are coming to us for our products or services are expecting to pay a commensurate rate with the quality that they're hoping to receive. Think about it. Here in the United States, a car is a pretty necessary part of everyday life depending on where you live. But what about a souped up sound system? That doesn't come with most base model cars. And yet there are people who are willing to pay thousands of dollars extra on top of the price of the car because they value the quality and experience of top of the line speakers. So what the lie we tell ourselves is, people think creative products are an unnecessary luxury, therefore no one will pay what they're actually worth. Then the truth we need to replace that with is, my fee is appropriate because my service brings value to my client's life and or business. Line number three. It's not okay to be financially successful as a creative entrepreneur. Hear me out. 
Even if you've never actually said it out loud, is that something that deep down you actually believe? Are you the type of person to look down on someone who's absolutely killing it financially in their business? Are you the kind of person who scoffs when the artist down the street raises her prices again? Back in 2011, I was hanging out at our apartment with two friends from high school. We were talking about hopes and dreams for the future, and I was telling them about my new photography business. I'd only been shooting weddings for just over a year at that point, and I was only charging $1,000 for weddings. And I remember saying that one day I hoped I would be able to charge as much as $3,000 for weddings. Well, my friend looked me straight in the face, laughed, and said, Abby, no one is ever going to pay $3,000 for wedding photography. It wasn't even about me or my skills. To her, the very idea of photographing weddings for more than pennies was laughable. But somewhere along the way, as we turned our passion into a business, we learned to equate creative business owner with starving artist. But good news, the myth about the starving artist, it's a myth, it's not true, it doesn't exist. Jeff Goins wrote an amazing book entitled Real Artists Don't Starve, where he breaks down where that myth came from and why it is absolutely, positively not true. I've gone ahead and linked to the book on Amazon in the show notes below. Artists have refused to starve for centuries, and yet we forget their financial success because it doesn't fit the narrative of what we tell ourselves that artists are supposed to earn. And yet the myth continues, but not because the folks buying our products don't value the quality, it's because we the creatives are afraid that our products aren't actually worth what we charge. We've tricked ourselves into thinking that we either must struggle due to the nature of our jobs, or that there's some sort of badge of honor to be found in just scraping by, when in reality, you have just as much of an opportunity to pursue the life of your dreams as someone who chose a safe career like public relations or accounting or IT. Just being a creative entrepreneur does not condemn you to a life of struggle. It is not an inevitability of small business ownership. It's also not wrong to want financial success. People often throw out the money is the root of all evil proverb in regards to folks who aspire to wealth, but that's actually an incorrect abbreviation of the original text. The original source, the Bible, for those of you who are wondering, says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Coveting it, making it an idol, hoarding it, valuing money more than people or service. Financial success allows you to plan for the future instead of only ever living paycheck to paycheck. It allows you to do things like enroll your kids in ballet classes or buy a new car when your family van suddenly bites the dust without having to worry about wiping out your entire savings account. Financial success also means that you can plan for periods of rest, like taking that amazing Disney vacation you've always wanted to take your family on. Just steward your wealth well by giving away portions of it to people in need. Financial success enables so many good things. Aspiring to wealth isn't evil. Money itself is just a neutral tool that we trade for time or goods or services. A dollar itself is neither positive or negative. It just is. It's what we do with that money that determines the trajectory between good and greedy. So if the lie we're telling ourselves is that it's not okay to be financially successful as a creative entrepreneur, then the truth we'll replace that with is financial success can be a very good thing because it allows me to continue doing a job I love and provides for a life we love. That's all I've got for you guys today. Tell me in the comments, if you've ever felt guilty about charging for your work, what was the reason behind it? Was it due to limiting beliefs about what your own work was worth? Make sure you hit like, and if you haven't already, also hit the subscribe button so we can keep you updated on all things bite-sized business. I'll catch you guys next Friday.